Hi and welcome back. We are up to mitzvahs 36 and 37, which are about Sukkot. I realize it's a couple of weeks late, but for the sake of completion, let's go through them. Okay, let's take a look inside. Mitzvah 36, it is a positive commandment to take up the four species on the festival of Sukkot. The scripture says, and you shall take for yourself on the first day the fruit of splendid trees, branches of palm trees, and boughs of thick-leaved trees, and willows of the brook. This means one lulav, one esrog, three myrtle branches, and two willow branches. One must take them up in the position that they grow. And once he has lifted them, he has fulfilled his obligation. I'll get into this more shortly. The entire day is a proper time for taking them up. By the law of the sages, the four species are to be taken up all seven days of the festival, and not the first day alone, except on the Sabbath, since the sages of blessed memory forbade taking them up then, even when the first day occurs on the Sabbath, for fear that one may carry them four cubits in the public domain, which is absolutely forbidden on the Sabbath. The four species can prevent one another from being acceptable. If one is disqualified or missing, all are considered unacceptable. If they are borrowed, they are unacceptable the first day, but satisfactory on the other days. If they were stolen, they are always disqualified. A young child who knows how to wave them properly has the obligation by the law of the sages in order to train him in the mitzvah. It is in effect everywhere and every time for males, but not females. Let's just continue to read Mitzvah 37 for the sake of completeness. It is a positive commandment to us from work on the day of Shemini Atzeres, and for that matter, Simchus Torah, because we have two days of Yom Tov. Okay, let's get a little more depth on this. So we're familiar, probably most of us are familiar with the four species, the Lul of Esro, Hadassim, and Aravos. A couple of the comments here are worthy of explanation. One must take them up in the position that they grow. So this is most important and most significant relative to the Esrog. The esrog has to be taken with the pitom up and the stem down, because that's how it grows on the branch. It grows like this. Here's the branch. Here's the esrog. Stem here. Pitom up here. Okay. So, this is why you may be familiar that when you take the lul of an esrog, when you're making the blessings, you turn the esrog upside down. The reason for that is that you don't want to fulfill the commandment before you say the blessing, and you would be fulfilling the commandment if the esrog were positioned in the way that it grows, namely with the pitom up. But since you have the pitom down, you are not fulfilling the commandment and you can still make the blessing. Remember, blessings on commandments are great, but they have to be made before fulfilling the commandment, with the notable exception of lighting candles on Shabbos. Okay, so that's the reason for that particular uh, comment. Uh, so by the law of the sages, we take the Luvan Esrog seven days. Originally, originally, we only took the Luvan Esrog one day, and in the temple they took it seven days. In order to remember what's done in the temple, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai established after the destruction of the second temple, established that we should take the Luvan Esrog for seven days during Sukkot, just like they did in the temple, to remember what was done in the temple. However, not on Shabbos. Why? Because on Shabbos, we're always worried that people are going to carry in the public domain or in the unenclosed domain, they're going to carry their lulav and esrog. Because, gee, I have a lulav and esrog, but I have to get it to shul. Or, gee, I have a lulav and esrog, but I don't know how to use it. I need somebody to show me what to do. Gee, did the hadassim go on the right side? Did the hadassim go on the left side? If you need to know, ask Peggy. She knows, right? Because Peggy knows everything. Anyway, so... Um, so the rabbis prohibited taking the lulav on the first day, on any day that Shabbos, because out of this concern of transporting items in the public domain. So we don't take the lulav on Shabbos, but we take it the rest of the week. But again, back in the day, we would have only taken the lulav on the first day, and only in the temple would they have observed the mitzvah of lulav all seven days. You have to have all species in order for any of them to count which is interesting because that's not always the case with all mitzvahs. Some mitzvahs are a little bit more divisible or component. So you would think here, oh, there are components. If I don't have four components, at least I have three components. Not correct. Not correct. you got to have all four components. 
Okay. Oh, by the way, it is in effect everywhere and every time for males but not females because it is a time-bound commandment. It must be performed during the day. It is a specific time of day that the commandment is in effect. Therefore, the general rule that women are exempt from such commandments is followed in this case as well. Starting next time, we're going to spend at least two sessions taking a look, possibly three, but certainly two sessions taking a look at our next commandment. It is a positive commandment to give charity to the poor in Jewry. Big mitzvah, giving tzedakah. We'll talk about it next time. Thanks for being with us.